Charity from WFP and I'm here today with Ricky who heads up everything to do with electrical here at WFP and today we are going to be talking to you about fixed wire testing also known as electrical installation and condition reports or EICRs for short. Now this is something that the duty holder has to do to maintain electrical safety but Ricky will go into much more detail with that. This is just designed to give you a brief synopsis about what they are, how often you need them and the point of them really. Um, in the description below you should find, thank you Ricky, um, I am <laughs> you should find a link to our blog post um, which goes into much more depth, depth about EICR so if you've got any questions do head there obviously as of course just comment below as well if you've got any questions and we'll get back to you. So thank you very much for joining today and without further ado let's get to it. So starting with very simply what exactly is fixed wire testing? Yeah so fixed wire testing is the inspection and testing of your electrical system to ensure it's safe for continued use. Okay, so delving a little bit further in terms of what, do, what, what does fixed wire mean? Break it down for us a little bit. Yeah, so fixed wire is basically, it's, it's the fixed wiring of your electrical system. The easiest way to probably comprehend that is to think of it as the things you don't see. Mm -hmm. So obviously we know everything's got power in your building, your sockets, your lighting. Yeah. We know the switch, the switch and the light comes on. Yeah. We see the light, we see the switch, we don't see the wiring. That wiring is the fixed wiring. Okay, so basically the electrical infrastructure and what lives behind your sockets. Absolutely. So not to be confused with other electrical inspections such as PAP testing, or PAPs because technically PAP testing is testing testing. It is, yeah, technically. <laughs> um, which, is, which is a portable appliance testing but that's also commonly known now as in-service inspection and testing of electrical equipment. And that's essentially the stuff that you're plugging into your electrical installation. So. The EICRs and PAP can be confused, but they're not the same thing. So EICRs, going back to there, those, um, why would you need to do it? What's important about it? So th th there's, there's variable reasons why. I don't know why my voice is from. <laughs> like I'm bad with white. It's, 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 it's being serious. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's serious. So it's the tone went with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, so your legal responsibilities. Um, as, as we know, we talk about it all the time, where nothing says you actually should get an EICR done specifically. Yes. However, the grey area is you have to look after your employees. Yes. You have to make sure the electrical system is safe and you have to make sure your building is safe as well. So that falls into the Health and Safety Act, that falls into your electricity and work regulations. Um, but actually, it kind of makes sense from a business point of view as well to know what sort of state of electrical systems in, because mm. ultimately you're going to save downtime. Yeah. Because you know we've been able to detect, or early detect, I guess, issues that are happening. Yeah. Obviously, it forms part of your PPM while we're having to react to these situations. Yeah. PPM being planned preventative maintenance, a term that you'll probably come across a lot if you're a site manager or a facilities manager. Um, so this falls within that, Absolutely. essentially. Yeah. Um, and so obviously number one reason being save lives. You, know, you have to. Yeah, you have yeah. to protect people. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, a lot of fires are as a result of electrical faults. If we think back to, for example, Grenfell being the biggest example yeah. of late. Um, I think the biggest part is what, what certainly we always say to our customers is obviously you have to get it done. Yeah. How you choose to get it done, that's where the choice comes into it. Yeah. So we can just see it as a tick box exercise, you have to get it done, now it's done. Or you could work with a company, build up a PPM plan and really make the most and really get the most out of this. Something you have to get done and make it work for you. Absolutely. You know? And in terms of um, making it work for you and knowing what to do, there are obviously once you get your reports, there are um, obviously you should be reading those, it shouldn't be a case of putting it in a drawer, never to see the light, to see the light of day again. Um, we do actually have another video, um, which we, we can put on the screen as well for you, <laughs> to have a little look about what the codes mean in your report, because um, once you are reading those, obviously for your electrician, for us, it's gonna mean something a little bit more, and we should be, anyone that's giving you those reports should be talking you through what that says. But it really does help us for you to have a little bit more empowerment and confidence over what you're reading. 
and also to know, to see just from that knowledge, the quality of that report too. Um, so in terms of the ICRs, going back to a little bit more just basic information of the need to know is really for everyone. Um, how often would someone need it? So typically we, we aim to get sort of every five years that has become the industry norm. Um, it was always kind of that time scale, but earlier in the year, so March, I'll put it off the top of my head, um, law, law, landlords in the private rented sector got new legislation that said they must test at least every five years. Mm -hmm. uh, because they were just falling through the gaps and it wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of the industry norm, that's become the industry norm for domestic as well. Um, depending on the situation and depending on the building, it may be sooner than that. Yeah. Um, so if you've got a big industrial set, for instance, a lot of heavy machinery, you probably want to get in that a little bit more often. Yeah. Um, so, but ultimately it depends when you have the report done, it will on that report tell you um, when the next test is due. Mm -hmm. So for instance, our reports will all be say five years or a change of term. Okay. Um, because when you get the ICR, the actual says it's either on a time scale, um, a change of owner or tenancy, or a change of building use. Okay. So those are the three things you have to get done for. Right. Uh, but then yeah, ordinarily it's going to be the time scale, which is we aim for five years. Okay. Um, and if someone um, didn't know when their last EICR was, how would they how would they find that information? Yeah, so there's two ways. Uh, one of them means something, one of them kind of done. You know, so you look at the, the easiest way normally is to go to a distribution or infuse board. Right. We've got a sticker on there, which it will have to have a sticker somewhere, because that is part of the regulations, you have to stick it aboard. Okay. And it will say when it's last tested and when it's next due. Mm -hmm. However, if you haven't got that report, the sticker means nothing. So really, the, the quick reference is to look at the sticker, but you need that report. Because ultimately, that sticker will say when we've tested, it doesn't tell you what our ones do, but most don't, if there's any remedial works needed. So you can have a sticker and say, yep, that's okay, it's all been tested. And you go to the report and you've got 40 observations that need to be rectified. Yeah, and that sticker means nothing. That's not being done, especially if you've taken over a building, then obviously whoever's looking after that building becomes liable for it. Understood. Talking of liability, um, if someone, whether, regardless of whether they knew or didn't know, if they didn't do their EICR, what are the repercussions of that? Uh, well, we know if you ever go to the court of law in England, judges look dimly when anything comes to health and safety, they don't hold back. Um, so if you don't get it done, it's, it's on the duty order. If you get it done badly, it's also on the duty order. Mm. So you can, you can draft someone in very cheaply, and we know there's many companies that do it very, very cheaply for circuit, um, and then charge stores that match remedial work. Make but, their money back, yeah. Yeah, but whatever the case, you know, you instruct someone. It's the duty holder's responsibility to ensure whoever they instruct is competent. And competence is a really tough word in terms of how do you prove it? How do you prove competence? So the, the easiest one is to say, why we, for instance, we're NIC, UIC registered. Yes. Um, however, uh, there have been people going around saying they're registered when they ain't, um, producing the fake documents. Someone went to prison um, very recently, I believe this month that, that when we got prison for nine months for faking to be an IT oh So you really need to look into, you know, how do you look into a virtual contractor? Yeah. And just making sure they've got the accreditations, looking at the reviews. Uh, website's always a good one. What's the, what's the website look like? Is it a lot of effort put into it, like ours, which is substantial? They can show, you know, we're not going anywhere soon because you know, when you've got that one page website, it looks like it could be taken down in about 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a using a virtual company. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I always say to our customers, if, if something wants to go on, I'll stand and call next to you, because so I know what we do is correct. Yes. Um, if you haven't got that from the current electrical contractor, use us. <laughs> <laughs> because we would do that, we would you know, we stand by all our work. Yeah. And that is the standards that we work to. Absolutely. So I hope that's given you a very brief but informative lowdown on what EICRs are. Obviously the topic itself is so vast and um, anything to do with electrical safety really is to be fair to me. So I hope you have learned something from today's video. As I said before, if you have got any questions, please comment below. We'll ask them. All the details will be on the screen shortly to give us a call if you either need an EICR or need any electrical help whatsoever. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!